Shout out to the bro Raheem. Shout out to the whole Rawway, New Jersey. You heard if you from Jersey, get up in them comments and let me know what part of Jersey you repping. You heard what block, what Ave, what county, what town, what strip, what projects. Know what I mean, North, Central, South. You from the shore? Let me know in them comments. You heard? Z Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man running around the hood like He Man. Know what I mean? This that God of Gun series. You feel me? We dropping jewels and we talking about that Jersey State Penitentiary action and that boarding town action. Man, it's the East Coast Jail Story Channel, man. You know, we don't discriminate with no coast. But we dominate the East Coast, baby. Gen Pop gang in the building. That's a fact. If you need that promo, get at me. Because my prices is unbelievable. And that's a fact. If you do music, get at me for them collabs. Check my resume. I got songs and videos with Jada Kiss, Jim Jones, Conway. Even though Conway may be a little bit still mad at me, it's all good, baby. Z Lord, let's get it. And by my bar niggas stole my shit. I ain't no stole it, but in the, the rule of the tail is you swing off on who you think did it. Young niggas, yeah, niggas from North came in, didn't know that there was rules of the game, and he tried me. And I don't know if a nigga from North gassed him up, but that nigga left that wing looking like the elephant, man. Went from Rawway. I'm from up north, but I, I I I was getting money down the Asbury Park during the guard ever. You know what I mean? I wasn't guard body, but the niggas, you know, of course they supposed to try me. I was a young nigga. I was getting a lot of money. Like when they was riding around when, with them Cadillacs and 98s and 190Es, I was a young nigga with the Alfa Romeo at 17. You know what I mean? Like the Alfa Romeo. You know how niggas riding them in the map? Like, I was doing that, but they know me. I, I, I mean, they wind up accepting me from being out of town, you know? But I was a good nigga, because I always was the type of nigga, like, I got money young, and I didn't like the attention it brought, but so I started bringing these niggas from out there, where they live at, on the team, like that sort of shit. And, you know, it's, it's a long story, and I don't want to beat you down with it. I was a young, like, remember back when um that police got killed out there in, in Queens? With, with uh, Pappy and all them and all that situation. Yeah. I got caught up in that 89 situation when they started attacking all of us and they hit me with a uh, leader of a drug trafficking network. I think I was the youngest nigga to get charged with that. You know, I mean, I could get convicted of it, but I got charged with that. That was in 89. And, you know, that's when everything, you know, I had to go back for the P, you know, the parole violation. I went back to Boyd Town and they let me go by mistake. Or the boss was to go back to the county to face that shit. You know what I mean? And I wound up getting let from Borton Town by mistake. Word is gone. On the run for a minute, so they caught me. And then that's when it was game over. You know, I had to do all that till I came home in 2005. But I was down there from 95, and I was down there before. Remember how old boy was talking about the Terror Dome? A1 was the Terror Dome, because we started that shit. We was the S1. This one back with Public Enemy had the little niggas, the dark, you know, the, his little team, the S1. Mm -hmm. And so that was a bunch of us. Yeah, that was a bunch of North niggas, Patterson niggas. The leader of the clique was a younger nigga from who was a boxer, bantamweight nigga named Keyshawn from Patterson. We started the S1, North niggas. I was a sergeant of arms. We just used to go based off of intelligence. Like, you know, you get your position based off. We ran that shit. Like, where this bond? I got the whole shit. Then I got home. Then I came back in 2005. Was there from the whole time. Had it on smash with the cell phone. I got paperwork. Niggas should know all day. They knew what time it was. If you was a hustler, because I was a paralegal. I was, you know, I was trying to get my time back at twenty with a ten. So I was in. I was a paralegal dude. So whenever you came to jail, you had, and I was a cameraman down in the visitor hall. So anything that moved, nigga, you had to come see me because all that bringing weed and having your family bring shit in. That shit didn't have to happen like that. All you had to do was holler at me. But I used to be the one in reception 
when niggas come through the port in town, you had to see my face because I'm the one that was telling you, hey, yo, you can come in here, you can do two or three, two or three things. You can go ahead, start working on your case or working on your shit to get your, your full minimum status and get out there in the camps because a lot of y'all don't got time. I'm on B2. I got a lot of time. I'm going to be here for ever. But if y'all niggas really think y'all want to dig into y'all case, come holler at me. And you know, we can talk about other things. But I was always weeding out the niggas that get money on the street because they was the ones that can afford $750 to buy that cell phone. You know what I mean? And them the niggas I was always trying to lure and then let them niggas know you need weed, you need the room, you need whatever. Half a, half a piece of any, all that. And the police bring, I mean, it's, y'all can go deep. I swear to God, we'll law here. We'll law here. I ain't bullshitting. But. I wish you could speak to old boy first. Ask him about me. Say that. Like, yo, I remember you was mentioning, you know, a few niggas like C. Booty and all that. You know, people always hear about the jail roadway, but how is the town roadway out there in Jersey? I done drove past there a couple of times. It was looking pretty desolate and crazy. Yeah, roadway. I this but this what time town roadway is. Roadway is right next to Roadway and Elizabeth Linden, all that, no. They all within like maybe 15 minutes of each other. Niggas from out where you, like in other words, it's like one big bubble. Like how the five bubbles in New York is, but like it's a little tighter. And these are up all up North County. We hit about Asbury Park to like a club called Club 12. That's how I got plugged in, you know what I mean? Into that area. And I met a girl that happened to live on a block called Washington Avenue and everything became history from there. That's how I got plugged in. I was a young nigga riding around. It was cool at 15 and 14, 16 years old to ride around the limousine. Cause you know what I mean? You ain't got nothing to do with your money. You young, you just riding. And we used to go to Asbury Park and limousines. And that was younger, younger, younger. Like, you know what I mean? That's how I found out about Asbury Park. And my brother was God body, but I was a young nigga. I used to be like, yo, I used to be like, in, like, you know, like, infatuated, like, we could be walking through, you know, going back to East New York or going up to East Harlem or whatever, and, you know, they'll see that little leather pendant on his, uh, he had a little leather thing with the God, I mean, the universal flag type thing, and niggas be like, yo, peace, God, which is mathematics, and, like, I'm like, you know, them niggas start talking, ooh ooh all that, and then... I'm like, oh shit, you know, they piecing each other, it's all love. And then my, my brother, like, yeah, I might have to get some British, some British, you know what I mean? Brit- you remember British walkers? Not, not them British night shit, but British walkers. When you couldn't afford ballets and shit, you got British walkers. And so we were out there, you know, he's like, yeah, go ahead down to Orchard Street. They probably got all flavors and shit. You know, that's when, you know, the young era, that's how, like, you know, but that's how I knew about the guard body thing, but I was never that because my brother was like, you, you playing with it, you ain't, you, you know, I'm not going to put you on this. It's not for you. That's what he told me. But I used to go and see all he had, these, all these books and shit with, like, like folders with, like, Supreme Mathematics, this, and that, and the third. I'm like, why this nigga don't want me to see what he's going through? And I used to learn that shit, like Supreme Mathematics. This is the only thing I can remember. And I ain't never been no guard body ever. But I can remember this. Supreme Mathematics process of thought within the mind of man. The human mind is constructed in such a matter that my man may achieve but whatever you say, but I ain't never know what none of that meant. But I knew, I knew, I had to memorize that shit. And I ain't, you know what I mean? Just trying to be like my older brother, rest in peace. You know what I mean? But dude was talking about some stories and and you know Asbury Park and New York and da da da. And I'm like, yo, I was dead. Like, so let me ask you. You said you met the chick and then you went down to Asbury Park. What you? How you started getting I went, money? I went to a club down there. My man, my man, older brother used to go to this club down there back when Zanzibar was popping and all that. It was before Zanzibar was popping in North. It was a club in Asbury that everybody used to go to called Club Twelve. It was by the beach in Asbury Park. They used to have some sort of Greek fest, but it was a club down there. And I met some light skinned girl in there that lived in a project called Washington Avenue. And way before, way before, what's that movie with um, Wesley Snipes and them? And then they did that goofy shit and they was talking about CMP or some shit. We were CMP, criminal minded posse, or cash money, cash money, cash money posse. We was that way before that movie. And we took that criminal minded shit from, remember when BDP? Was criminal minded posse? Mm-hmm. We did, we did, uh, we was criminal minded posse. 
they was criminal minded or some shit or BDP. They ain't, they had, and we just took that album name and made that that cool. And that's what we did. Out of town, nigga, young nigga from Broadway, books in East New York, East Harlem, all that, on Washington Avenue, Asbury Park. I went to go, I went to war with some of them dudes that he was talking about, Najee and Jazzov and blah, blah, blah. I can tell you a story where he rolled up on me with a revolver. I got one of them pouches on with maybe almost $27,000. That's when we selling them capsules. When go back in the day, they used to sell them on 145th. I used to get my weed back on 145th. And my Jamaican brethren named Pete plugged me in. He said, yo, they sell coke or whatever. He had GP45, the big long one. Them shits out in Jersey was going for $100 in, in Asbury Park. I was selling them shits for $20. So all the hustlers would come to me and get them shit for $10 and sell it to them people out there because that's like, you know, Asbury in the, in, the, in the area where there's like a lot of rich people and them crackers used to come and, and you could sell one bottle for $100, $200 and they come up on their feet. But I was doing it for 20 and then I busted them down to 10 way before AZ and all them up there, all them was doing that. Word up. And then I got plugged in my man up from Washington Heights named Tom. That's when... Pete plugged me in a tone up there in Manhattan, Washington Heights. Boom! I used to get my own yay. Used to go to the to the um to the um to the little shops and get the the whole Mac. You know, you can get the whole Mac bottle, 100, 120, 120 bottles in one big Mac, and one hundred twenty dollars for the whole pack, and fill them up. Just be, you know, your thumb be no numb as hell from you know packing them bottles each one, each one by each one. But we sold them, we broke them down, we was like, fuck that, we gonna, I'm gonna sell them now for $10, fuck that $20, we gonna get more money by the time these niggas move a burger in one week, we gonna move like five or six of them shits because we letting them go for 10, and some of their biggest hustlers say, yo, you know what, we gonna start fucking with him, because that shit, he got his raw, and he giving it away for nothing, he's a dummy, he don't know what he's doing, but he ain't know the prices I was getting, nobody can fuck with the price, and that was way, and AZ and them older than me. You know what I mean? We was doing I ain't never say nothing. What was born with law here? All that. You said That's you said dudes from As- all that. You said dudes from Asbury tried to run up on you with a revolver? That's all. He, he dude mentioned his name in it. Like, you know, cause I was from out of town, young nigga. I was like maybe 17, 18. You know, like you know, like Asbury niggas ain't gonna just let anybody come up in their town and get money and you not God body, nigga. Fuck out of here. So them niggas, you know. And them niggas was bigger than me. I'm a little nigga. I always been a little nigga. Never been no big nigga. But you know, them niggas was like, yo, yo, what's up? Like, you know, they didn't know me, but they knew of me. It was like, yo, some little young nigga around there getting mad money. He, he, he not like, he got a big ass Gucci chain with a giant ass Af- African medallion on it. running around with big bricks and nigga try to roll on it. So he runs up on me, right? With the revolver out. He like, give me the bag. And I got, you know, that's back in the day when he wore all them damn rings on them goofy ass rings and shit. So I peels one off slowly, right? But I don't want him to get to the money. Fuck them rings. I threw it at him. And then I jumped the fence, right? I jumped the fence. Now that nigga was supposed to go boom, 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 boom. But he had a revolver. That's when I knew, oh, they ain't built like that. And I jumped the fence and got away. And he didn't shoot. So at that point in time, I said, you know what? That was when I first bought my first Tech 9. When I seen that, it was real. Fuck that much. Them niggas, like, I didn't know about the wolves and all the old, you know what I mean? I just thought, you know, you get money, you show love, niggas ain't wrong. I ain't know about the wolves, niggas, robbery, all, nah. But that's, you know, I had to learn that from the older heads. They was way older than me. But then, you know, I'm the type of nigga like, oh, you not just gonna take nothing from me. Fuck that! I went. I ran back to the crib. I had the I had the Jeep Wrangler with the Gucci. Remember when I used to go to that that day and get your your car Gucci out, like and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Remember that? I you... had the Jeep Wrangler. I ran back home. I ran back up north by myself because I was down there by myself. No team back then when all this shit was happening. I just knew the girl from Washington Avenue. If you do your math on Washington Avenue, they they, they call that shit Wall Street. All of that. And that my, I ain't never seen so much money at a young age, all that, you know what I mean? 18 million, you bought an alpha math. You can do the math on what a what a fifty thousand dollar car cost it back then. But we didn't see that. So anyway, boom, I goes back up north. I sit, I said, yo, I, I'm sitting up here not getting no money. 
Fuck that. That's when I went and bought that first tech, and then I went. That's when the army suits came into play. No more jewelry. No more none of that. I, I went and got the fatigue. See, that's when the Jungle Brothers and them came out. And I used to see how them niggas was rocking the army fatigue and the, and the army fatigue jackets. And I had the tech nine wrapped around, around it. And that's when you know I started going on the tech. Najee, I was accused of shooting that Najee mother house, shooting through the window. Jazz R and them, the guard body. They was mad. Some nigga named Knowledge, Knowledge Bond. He was a big dealer back then. He was an older head, though, way older than me. Had the red BMW, blah, blah, blah. One of the younger niggas that I brought down with me, my age, whatever. His girl was big on, big on him. And then he told somebody in the street, tell Ernie I want to see him. Like, that sounds like a command. Like, you know what I mean? That seemed like a demand. What? So... I goes over there with me and my three niggas, we all, you know, we all tooled out and we knock on where they be at. I'm be like, yo, I knocked on doors like, yo, somebody want to see me? And they came out, it was about five, six, seven of them in there. They looked outside, they seen how my two niggas was posted up. And I'm like, yo, um, you know, you want to see me about nothing? And then the whole tone changed, like, yo, no, um, you know, Oh, somebody was messing with my girl, you know, and da, da, da. these are all God bodies, but they're older than me. But I just had to stand tall, but I don't, I salute them niggas to this day. Like, you know what I mean? We cool. I don't got no beef with none of it, but that was just the era that I went through, and I just heard what y'all was talking about. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, I can go back a step further, and I can go a little deeper in detail about that born town, Uwa Uwa. And, and I can also tell you where that blood shit came from. It started from a nigga from North. I mean, from New Brunswick, New Jersey, named Sincere. He was going back and forth to Rikers Island. This room when, when that shit just, just, just started popping off at Rikers Island. And he was Muslim. And he came, he was going back and forth. He, you know, I don't know if he, he, he became blood because of pressure in the island. But ain't nobody do nothing to him. He was a silent nigga. He came back and he started pressing. He was still Muslim. But the, the issue in the Uma was, Yo, you can't be blood, you can't be Muslim at the same time. And we was, and not most of us, and I wasn't none of that. But I was like, yo, that's my man, he, he a good dude. You know what I mean? He had gold teeth, whatever. Like, you know, he was from, my, he was from New Brunswick, New Jersey. And he brought that shit and he organized, he made a lot of them niggas. Way before that North shit blood came down and forth, he organized all that shit. And that's when the Latin Kings got ran out in the big yard. I was dead. I was there as a paralegal. I represented these niggas. I done beat niggas that had bodies in Yardville. That nigga that beat a sergeant up or rest of the sergeant. Sergeant died. That nigga came to Boyd Town and said, I had to represent him at court line. I was the paralegal nigga there. I was the one. I mean, <laughs> that, you know, that you I said, you, you said, to see me. You said the Bloods and the Latin Kings got it on in Boyd Town? Oh, yeah. The big yard. Oh, yeah. My man since there came back and turned all these niggas in the blood. You know what I mean? These younger niggas from north, from wherever. A lot of that shit happened right there in Borden Town. And the whole thing was like, yo, the war, the, 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 the word was in Rikers Island was. And the only way he would know that because he was down Borden Town finishing up on something else. But he had a case in New York. So he was going back from Borden Town to Rikers Island, blah, blah, blah. And from somewhere, he must have met somebody that was, might have been, you know, Damu, whatever. And he brought that shit back to Bowling Town and, 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 and bullied all of them because he was on A-Wing. He was on A-1 a or 2, A-3, one of them shits. That's the dorm. That's the dorm. That's what, what old boy said he was at when niggas was doing that give me up shit. Just say me and you, like, we friends in the streets or whatever. Or you on that, you've been on that wing so long and you stand up and you can fuck around. We in the back, we playing cards, we playing casino, all right? We ain't betting no money, nigga, but we gonna say this, yo. I bet you 10 give me ups, yo. I bet you 10 give me ups on the game. Now, the give me ups is that's that dance and look, you know, you should do in the, the club and shit. When I see you in the mess hall, these are give, give me ups on command, meaning, if you in the mess hall, I can be like, yo, my nigga, don't you owe me something? He gonna give you a little, like, sheep and smile, because he know you owe him, you owe him 10 gimme-ups. He can make you go on the wall and give him a bunch of his gimme-ups. You know what I mean? If you want to play or whatever, you know what I mean? But that's like a bet. That's some goofy shit, like, you know what I mean? And we used to also go to the body on Friday night. That's also true, you know what I mean? 
just go to the body. That's how I learned what a liver shot was. When me, when me and Foo, me and Foo was going to the body. He was a big nigga. I'm a slim nigga, but we go to the body. They be like, yo, he going to hard. The body was with, with Foo. Like, but we cool. That's my man. It's my Muslim brother. But, you know, that's why I learned what a, what a liver shot could do to you. That could take the wind out to you. You know what I mean? And we used to do that in the back of the wing. Play chess, but we used to do that for gimme ups. He thought that, he told you the story like, like they was being disrespectful to old boy because he was, he was, he was, uh, guard body or whatever. Nah, nigga, that nigga was there. He was from that wing. We do that. We play like that. We, we bet gimme ups. We ain't got no cigarettes to bet or niggas waiting for they, they pay or whatever. We bet gimme ups. And that's just some joking shit. Now, if you don't, if you, if the nigga be like, if he want to disrespect you, he going to make you give him 10 gimme ups in the big, in, in, in the big yard. Or he gonna make you give him 10 give me ups in the mess hall where all the niggas from A table gonna see. And Asbury niggas had that two, two, two three tables at the end. You know, you know, we everybody sat where they sat at. And you know, not only that, but it was a little more than that. He wasn't there long enough. He, he got there, he got there a little later. You know what I mean? But I ain't disrespect the old boy, but I think I might, he might know me. I know he gotta know me if he was talking the way he was talking. Who, who you talking about? You talking about C? You talking about C Divine or you talking about Sean Duke? C Divine Allah, he said he from Asbury Park, something like that. Cause that's why I just I was you know I was viewing your page and I seen something about Asbury Park and I jumped on it and then it said Boyd Town. I started, I'm like yo, what the fuck? That's my what? I ain't gonna lie to you, you know the numbers the numbers outweigh. Outweigh, they got ran out. They, you know, the jail was locked down for two weeks. They, they shipped all the Latin kings out. All that shit was over. You couldn't find a, you couldn't find a Nieta. You couldn't find a, 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 a king in Boyd Town during that time. And the ones that was king that didn't happen to go to that big yard that day, they, they, they never claimed it. You ain't never seen no yellow and black no more. And this is when you wear street clothes there before they took all that. Jersey also has. West Coast sets that's out there. What came first, though? The West Coast sets that's in Jersey or the East Coast sets? I'm going to be honest with you. Whoever, this was back, this got to be back 90, 97, 98. Whenever, whoever, I don't know if it was my man from Brooklyn, um, um, OG, oh, what's his name? OG, ah, with the glasses and shit. I don't know if he... He might have played it, but like, you know, he was a young dude. The dude from New Brunswick was a young dude, so he had to be in C-74. So whoever, when that motherfucker blood thing touched Rikers Island, I don't know if that shit was, might have been a week or two fresh in it, but he was going back and forth. So that wherever it came from, that's between him and them niggas that he was in Rikers Island of, whatever it said. So whoever plugged in, whoever they plugged in in Rikers Island during that era, Influence my man from New Brunswick to fall, you know, to either eat that for the purpose of being safe in Rikers Island and not, you know, not staying saying like, you know, I'm Muslim, I don't do that, you know, blah, 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 or whatever. I think that conflict with my belief or whatever. Whatever he did, he brought that back to Borton Town. Way before Nook, niggas was coming down there claiming that. And I'm being dead ass. Now, I think that North, I think that blood shit came in play with Pop and North at a later date. But that shit was down Borden Town, because you know shit hit the jail first. And and he organized what he organized. But Law, he asked anybody that was in Borden Town that know about that riot that ran, that when the blood, that's when the blood first came down Borden Town. Bulls Farm. And that, and that was about the time when they started the gang unit. Because everything in the back was ass egg. That's when you do 90 days or 120 for a fight or slight, or you got to do a year. That was way before the, you know, where they take your visits for, you know, having a dirty urine. Wasn't no STG, none of that shit. That shit was straight ass egg. The red roof in, that's what we used to call it. It's that red building behind Borden Town. And the jail got cleared to all. It happened in the big yard. I bullshit you not. Don't take my word, go ask him. He, he said he was there. Ask him about that shit in the big yard with the bloods in the, in the, in the, in the Latin King. I was, I was getting money there. 
everybody from all counties. I sat at all tables. I don't give a fuck if you were, because it was about money to me. And it was about, you know, my niggas. Like anybody that was about that, because I was, listen, I had to get money. I had to say, listen, I, I got a million years to do. You know, being that young, trying to figure like, yo, I got to change 11, 12 years. I couldn't see that far. I thought, yo, I went and got my, I went and got my GED in 91. When I got out, came back, I went and got that paralegal certificate. But I used that shit to get the fuck out of jail, help niggas from Lang City, big bodies, help niggas, you know, that was my house. You wanted to get to the camps because you had cases, you had municipal cases and shit like that. I was that nigga you come see to help you beat that shit. You know, get that shit out so you can get to the camps. Or you want to get back to court or whatever. Or you want to get some time back. All that. Ask them niggas about the paralegal, the nigga with the gold teeth, the slim nigga, boyhead nigga, Raheem. That was my name down, Raheem, and before that, ES or Ernie. If you from, if you call me Ernie, that means you you know me from up north or you know me from Asbury Park. I converted to Islam on the strength of it, except all religions. It ain't, a, you know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, I joined because I needed, a, like, nah, hell no. I, I, oh, I was nice. I'm a slim nigga. I'm a slim nigga, but words bond, I, I held my own. I think I had one fight in 10 years, and the one fight that I had that happened to be, unfortunately, from a nigga from north. So you can steal my motherfucking charger. Cause you know you had the TVs, you niggas make a home home makeshift chargers and shit that you put in the light socket and all that shit. And blah 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 niggas stole my shit. I ain't know who stole it, but in the, the rule of the jail is you swing off on who you think did it. Young nigga that yeah, nigga from North came in, didn't know that there was rules of the game, and he tried me. And I don't know if a nigga from North gassed him up, but that nigga left that wing looking like the elephant man. And I only respect him because I winged off on him and I kept telling him, we're going to fight every day till I get my shit back. I don't give a fuck who you down with. And he was caught North. It was all North. What jail so you what said about, What jail you said that was in? Boarding town. Albert C. Wagner Youth Correctional Facility. I was on B2. My cell was 32. Matter of fact, it was 32, then it was 18. So that shit is that set. It's, it's, so you, it, that shit was just like regular like cell blocks where there's a line of cells no. going down in a row? Right, it go that it go based off of this. If you got if you got over twenty, if you got at least over ten years or so to do, where it's mandatory minimum, you get your own cell. But if you like one of them niggas where you know you might got a fifteen with a five or whatever, you going in the back where it's double man cell. You know what I mean? So towards all the way to back, that was where the cells like when you now you got a funky. But from like room room thirty all the way down to one, nigga, that's straight set. You know that's that's. All the niggas from out, you know, because it's 21 counties in New Jersey. And, you know, the biggest city in Jersey is Essex County. So you're going to get, you're going to get East Orange, Irvington. You're going to get all these little surrounding counties, but everybody going to claim North. But you're not from North. You're from East Orange. You're from Irvington. But you know how it go. But the bigger city is North. So everybody claim that. They claim that. I'm the nigga said, that used to bring the D. I, I was the only nigga that was able to bring a live motherfucking, bring my equipment, my turntables, and have a, a fucking talent show in the Born Town Jail gym where that's how I met Mike C from East Dodge. Everybody claim he's from North, but he's from East Dodge. He the one that taught Tretch and Tretch and BMX and all them niggas stole his style. You can look him up on the internet. Nigga still, he was down Born Town. He know. But you said do somebody went up in your cell and took your your, your TV charger? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, because I'm just a humble nigga. Like, you know, I'm the quiet nigga. I'm, because I'm more focused on getting this, um, getting this money from other sources. But, like, you know, young niggas come in, think you got to be wild and da, da, da. And then he don't know that, he don't see why everybody don't fuck with me, don't say nothing to me. It's like, you know, ain't nobody school. They're like, yo, that, that, that nigga been here for a minute. Like, you know, but don't, you know, he ain't come on the fuck with you. See, like, we hear numbers, but we don't fuck with that nigga. We know what type of time it is. But you don't know because you from East Orange, but you think people look at me and be like, yo, this nigga look like he's soft. Like, he ain't nobody or whatever. Right? And, you know, when I'm doing my paralegal activities, because I'm working as a paralegal, I, I want that top money, 120. I come back and I go to watch... You know, because my thing was I like to watch The Simpsons when I get off work. 
off I get off the job, I like to buy the Simpsons. I go on my little cup of soup, because you get the cup of soup, you take the soups out and you put your your, your thing in there, your, your charger. It's, you know, you, you get your charger, you put it in there and you put it on top and you put it back in the thing and it still looks like, and you mix it in with your big tray of cup of soups. So, like, if they ever do a, a swag raid, they're not going to look in, they're going to see that the soups is closed. So they, they ain't going to know that your charger is in there. So I come back and our charger's gone. And I bust out to him like, yo, who the fuck? Somebody was in my room? I'm walking up and down the And I'm looking at niggas. I'm looking at him. I'm looking in the eye. And I look at this one nigga. I don't say nothing. I just think he did it. I winged off on him. Boom, 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 boom. And you know, I high some off. Like, yo, yo, what happened? What happened? What happened? Like, nah, nigga, fuck that. My charger got stolen. So, well, Lord, it, it just happened to be that my instinct went to the right nigga. I said, yo, I'm going to beat that nigga ass eight days until I get my charger back. They gassed him up to go in the room, shoot the fair one with me. That nigga came out looking like the motherfucking elephant man. And then guess what? I said, this shit going to happen every half an hour until I get my shit. So guess what? All of a sudden, my shit turned back up on my locker. I ain't had a problem. That nigga went to PC, and the only reason I respect him to this day because he ain't going to tell on me. He ain't say, yo, that nigga, that nigga, that nigga, uh, uh Raheem beat me the fuck up. He was wrong. I ain't had a problem. You know what I mean? But somebody should have schooled him. So that's what happened with that. That was the only, that was the only fight I ever had in that motherfucking jail. And the motherfucking word was, yo, did you see, did you see, dude? That nigga, you know, my little knuckles was mine. My knuckle game was right, ain't no, you know, back then we knew how to fight, nigga, ain't no, like, ain't no grabbing out, nigga, we rocking, nigga. And that nigga face looked like the elephant, man, I bullshit you not, they talk about that, ask anybody that was there, they know, I ain't never had no problems with nobody, Blanco from North, the Puerto Rican nigga, that's where I was getting my, you know, that ooh ah ooh from, Columbia, he got caught up in Hackensack County, the only reason I know who he, who he was, cause I, Okay, he got his time back. He got caught with 25 of them things, them things. Just dropping them off. He was from Queens. But he got up getting caught up in the, you know, in, in, in somebody else shit in Hackensack. The nigga told on him. But he came down to foreign town. And that was Flacco, man. Flacco from North. Ask anybody from, about Flacco from North? No. And Flacco couldn't move no, but he was heavy out there on that thing. But he had to come through me. And then it came through as where I got the social worker. And I got the officer from B1 named Bennett, because he wanted, he's a young white boy, wanted to be cool with, you know, with the blacks or whatever, because they see, he, they, you know, every time everybody do their workouts, the police out there, the police out there, white boy, doing workouts, and he happened to be from Belmore, and Belmore right next to Asbury Park, and my nigga C. Booty used to bring all the cell phones to him, the box blockbuster, and he used to bring them cell phones to me. What years we talking about? Man, from, I, I got, I, I've been, I got convicted in 1995 when I was down there in, in 95. Cause it wasn't no, it wasn't no, no trial. No, I just got caught. This was pending charges from when they let me go. Cause I had that charge pending from when Board Town let me go by mistake after I finished up on parole on the last joint. So when they let me go and they finally caught me, the only thing they could do to me now was when they caught me was sentence me. So in June, June, June of uh, 95, I was on my way down. To, I was on my way to, from, um, Monmouth County Jail to Craft, Craft in um in Trenton, and from Trenton that's when you get classified, and then they sent me back down to Boarding Town, and that's from '95 on until them niggas sent me out. So that fuck wanted to be with his brother, and he, he you know he told, oh this you know he he he, he didn't want to get all that weed, and he didn't want to get uh the cell phones in with the. With the the heroin and, 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 and all the other shit with the social worker. And, uh, and, and how I met the social worker is the white boy kept coming back to my wing with motherfucking gum in his mouth. I'm like, how the fuck you getting this gum? And he told me the story about how the social worker was fucked up over him, Italian nigga, with, with, with them different color eyes, and she was going through a divorce. That's how, and then that's how I plugged her into going, because he was on his way out. I said, yo, bro, if you don't do nothing, because I kept niggas off his ass, you know what I mean? When he needed cigarettes and all that, I used to get all that. Street to street money. So I, I never had to go to canteen. Niggas wanted whatever they wanted. But I used to just target niggas that hustled. Who wanted themselves. So the social, worker, the social worker got charged and all of that? She eventually got, she didn't get charged. She wound up 
getting caught on the fact that they found out that she was dealing with a nigga that was once in that jail. But, you know, I kept it so tight. Well, they didn't know nothing about the upbringing and the thing, but she used to fuck shit up by being all emotional and calling my fucking wing to my to, to uh, my officer, uh, Jack, calling him saying, can I speak to Lee? And, and like, you got to think about it. But he black and he cool. He don't give a fuck what's going on. But he like, why the social worker calling my wing asking for Lee, right? And she was calling because she was upset because this nigga wasn't calling her once he went to the street. <laughs> and she crying and getting all upset. And I'm like, damn, yo, bro. I'm like, yo, like, you, you, you blowing the spot up because now, with the, you, you know what I mean? But Jack, I ain't worried about the CEO Jack telling on me, but you got to think about this. How the fuck you calling me like that? Like, call me and just be like, yo, send Lee up to her. Uh, you know, the social services, like every year, right upstairs and with the tension that. And with, uh, nurse, you know, where, the, where you go to see the nurse and all that shit. And they're up, the next floor is where administration at. That's where you go see administration to get your gang minimum status or get classified to your job when you first come on to jail. Because when you first come to jail, you go to E1. That's reception. There ain't nobody over. The only niggas that's on E1 is the niggas that really can't stand tall in population. And, you know, just yet, but they, they, you know, they coordinated to the wing. Like, you know what I mean? But that, that's that. But there's still population. But that's where reception go. I used to take the pictures in motherfucking boarding town. So you can't say you never saw me, my nigga. Whenever you want to go take a picture with your family, nigga, you had to come see me. And if you had weed, nigga, and you ain't want to boost that shit or swallow it, because nobody want no weed coming out your ass smelling like shit, nigga. Come out at me if you got five balloons, nigga. Give me two of them. And guess what? I'm throwing them shit. Nigga, the police don't search me. I've been there that long. You feel me? So I bring that shit up. Like, you know what I mean? And then them niggas was getting food packages, so I was eating for free, even though my family ain't come down there like that. But any nigga that took a picture between 2000, maybe 2007, all the way up until like two, 2003, until that niggas got me shit the fuck out with some goofy shit, you heard? Because that bitch ass nigga from Madison told on me, because he wanted to be with his brother, he wanted to get a transfer. So you gonna tell on me? Think I ain't never do nothing to you, nigga. And then beat you to the body, nigga. That's about it. How you That's found out that he told on you, though? You knew how you found out for well, a fact? Because the same police that had, when they called me down to Sally Port for administrative, for administrative urine after that nigga told, and I couldn't pee. You know, because the thing is, when you when when you, when it, you can smoke weed, but when it's time they call you for you and they call up to the wing, and they be like, yo, um, they'll call and be like, such and such, such and such. They want you down in the uh, Sally Port. Um, and when they call you for Sally Port, nigga, you know what it is. That's that's either you going home or you going to court or you taking the urine. And they call me the Sally Port, so I know what time it is. So I drink seven cups of water, them jail cups, seven cups. You you, you piss the first two, that might be dirty. Second one must be dirty, but the third one is straight water. So I was beating them shits for years, but at this time I couldn't go. So when I got down there, but the, because of police. Knew what type of nigga I was, and I got worst ball. I couldn't go. I told him like, "Yo, worst ball, I can't go." That nigga filled that cup up with water, worst ball, and 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 I was negative. But guess what? They couldn't get me. They couldn't get me for nothing else. But they did find the weed in the law library or whatever, because that's where I stashed my shit at. At the end of the day, I stashed it. My shit there. You got ounces of weed. Bring. I'm stashed it there. That's general area. Can't they? They can't say that it was in my cell or I was in the dorm and belonged to somebody. Nah, nigga, that shit is in the law library, nigga. Anybody could have put that there. You feel me? That was my thing. That's why I stashed my cell phones at and that street to street money. And if niggas was getting money, niggas was getting money because people, you know, people had their habits. Niggas might have wanted weed or that other thing. They get fifty dollars. You get fifty dollars cash, nigga. That's equivalent to a hundred dollars worth of owa owa in the jail because you got it in cash. And that's how I met that police on B one because the nigga I was walking up from cold to my. You know, and he used to always, always ask, like, yo, everybody that he respected on B1 was like, yo, I can't go upstairs to see, um, see Raheem, the paralegal, or he got to do some paperwork for me. So that was the, like, you know, that was the ploy. But them niggas was wanting either some weed or they want something else. And them niggas had money. So one day I'm walking up the stairs to go to my job, and, I mean, to go to, back to my wing, or whatever, eat my little super tuna and shit, and watch my little Simpson. Police come through, 
He comes to the gate and be like, Lee, why all these motherfuckers coming to you asking me to come upstairs and see? I was like, nah, they're just trying to get the, their paperwork done. I'm a paralegal. That's my play. He was like, nah, you're doing something more than that. White boy. So I'm like, he's like, I can help. I'm like, well, what you mean you can help me? I was like, I don't do nothing. He's like, I'm good. I can help you. I was like, all right. So I tried to take. I pulled a $50 bill out of my sock and gave it to him and said, yo, bring me a half, half a pint of him. Right? Half a pint of him ain't nothing but what? Back then? What? Maybe $13, $14? So he got all that, he got the, all that rest to himself. I got a half a pint of Henny that I, I can sell to these niggas that came from North. Because niggas from North, Jersey City, Patterson, um, Camden, all these, Atlantic City, all these niggas get money. You get money from where? But these niggas can afford to spend a hundred dollars on what? A mother to fill something they can't get in jail, nigga. A whole bottle or half a penny. And that's where it started at with him, me and him and with the cell phones. No, that's how it started with the police. He, he, he ended going. up going down too? Who? The man, police. I protected everybody. I protected everybody. Nobody got... That motherfucking police was still there when I left. That nigga retired. So it, I only had two motherfuckers in my lane that knew what it was. That was Bennett, the white boy on B1 who was a CO, Officer Jack. And the only reason I fuck with the office, the only reason the police on my way fuck with me, because they knew what it was. I beat a few, I beat, I ain't gonna lie, I beat up two niggas. One nigga was from Camden, and one nigga was from uh, North. That was the only two fights I had in 10, 10 years. So I was, you know what I mean? And, and them shit spoke for themselves. That shit, my, my history preceded itself. And I'm a skinny nigga. If you look at me, I'm a skinny nigga. What happened with the dude from Camden, though? Nah, I'm watching motherfucking, I'm watching, um, I'm in there watching um Voltron or some shit. Or, or some shit, like, you know, I'm off of work at four, at five o'clock, I'm watching both time. This nigga gonna talk about not, nigga, you from Canada. You gonna come in there talking about, you gonna try to change the TV? Nigga, I ain't saying nothing. I'd be like, I'm going to your, let's go to your room. I think I threw two punches and the fight was over with. I went right back down set and started watching both times again. But we in the day room, nigga, you don't do that, nigga. Who the fuck is you, nigga? I don't give a fuck what y'all watch. Y'all wasn't here. My day ended early. So I'm watching, we watch, we here first. Nigga, I don't give a fuck what y'all watch when y'all watch it. Y'all watching Thundercats, get the fuck out of here, nigga. We watching old school shit, like Voltron or some shit, whatever was on that day. And I went out when nigga gonna beat him up, the police knew about it. He was out there laughing at it. I heard what you did. <laughs> they laughed about the shit. And if anybody told, guess what? Jack was cool because guess what? I ain't never had to go to breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I used to get all my shit from the ODR. You know what I mean? Officer Dining Room. Them niggas the ones that get all that fancy shit. We don't, you know, niggas from jail, you get the jail food. Plus, you got the niggas that's runners that bring the trades to the jail for the niggas that, you know, locked in, they can't go. They ain't allowed to come off. Like, they, they might got a medical pass where they can't, they don't got to go to work because they fuck their ankle up playing ball in the gym or some shit. They bring, when they bring them, them niggas trades, I got motherfuckers, they cheese. Uh, this, that, and the third, and I asked Jack, you want something? You want breakfast? You want, you know? So the police cool with us. He wasn't doing no goofy shit, like bringing us nothing, but he know if he hungry, he ain't got to go down to ODR. He ain't got to do nothing. He get what he want right on the brink. He want to eat super tunnels with us. Hey, Jack, we hooking up tonight. What's good? And we had always had the chef, the nigga that knew how to make that super tuna, the chicken, you know, all that shit. You know, and, and, and that's how we do what up? I swear to God, I, I bullshit you now. I'm not trying to gas you. I swear to God, got paperwork and he could ask any of them niggas. I swear. And the story deeper than that. And it goes to the street. Real nigga shit. D Booty, you know, he's talking about Dark City and all that. That was my man. That was the one I, like, you know how I met him? Because some nigga from 4th Avenue was disrespecting the little Haitian nigga. Disrespecting him. No disrespect to my Haitian brother, but like, like I don't like you bullying nigga. He was a young nigga, 17, maybe 17 years old. He's trying to bully him. I was like, yo, whatever you owe him, nigga, whatever he owe you, nigga, I owe it. I mean, now I got it. You owe me, I, I got it. Get it from me. And that's how me and C Booty got, you know, and he a legend out in that city. Boy, he got killed down in um, Virginia or whatever, doing some good shit that I would probably did. Breaking up a fight between some girls and nigga dumped on him. He died, he died just doing something good. But anyway, he had the one that started that black soprano shit that you hear that them niggas from West Side Gun and all them be talking about black sopranos. Ask them niggas about black soprano. Ask them niggas about them, them parties and clubs and why, who inspired him. He was me, that was me, that was my, what he 
he, he went with my mother to get rid of a, a tool down in Asbury Park. My mother pressed him, yo, with that, with that joint that, that, that I hit this nigga in the face with. I smacked him with it because I ain't like, I'm just going to put him in the truck and take him to Brooklyn and just scare him. Scare him. But that nigga called the police. That's a whole nother story. But where is Bond? Ask him about sleep with him. Rest in peace. Word up. Real nigga shit. He, he the one that started that Black Soprano shit with that, that, Eventually, morphed into what West Side Gun and them was talking about with that Black Soprano shit, yo. I was like wondering why niggas never aim to ever bring that shit up. Niggas like, y'all niggas gonna need to mention his name before y'all even talk Black Sopranos, because that shit existed way back when, to my level, I was in the thing then. See, Booty was out there repping. He was the one bringing me the cell phone. He was the one meeting, see, he was the one meeting the police in Belmont at motherfucking, it was one of these little, one of these little blockbusters. Remember when blockbusters used to have stores where you can go in there and, and, and do that? And he was from Belmont. And he used to give them all them motherfucking Motorola. I got pictures of the old Motorola cell phones. They used to run off of them batteries, them door, them double A batteries, four of them shit. And you just had to buy your minutes back then. Word up, I swear to God, I will love you. I swear to God, I'm not bullshit. But I heard that story that you put out there with old boy, and I said, whoa, I wish I could add on to that. Or at least let him know. That shit deep, yo. And y'all was showing pictures of boy in town and da 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 and this, that, and the third. I'm like, yo, my nigga, I was there forever. And if you ever was in there in that time, you can't say you don't know me, my nigga. There was the only paralegal on there with the front gold deep. I had him since 86. Yo, Word when, up. but you got pictures of your, you got pictures in Borden Town too? I got down there from the business of oh, bro. I'm about to go dig. You inspired me, my nigga. Word up. And right. I'm a video doodle, man. I do that video production shit myself. Like, you know what I mean? But I just, like, lost the energy. Like, you know what I mean? I lost my drive, like, you know, to really, like, but when I seen what you, what you had going on and shit, I'm like, yo. This that type of shit Because I don't want to be In front of the camera talk I don't want to be That personality None of that None of that I like to play my part Behind that camera Because word of all That's how I was in jail Word of all Nigga tell you That was the humblest nigga But you could tell Like anybody That was anybody In that jail They respected me Because if I was that Not nigga If I was paying dues Nigga Guess what I was in the population There nigga I was from Union County Slash Kings County Slash Mama's County All that and anybody, them niggas that came in there, if I knew you from Asbury Park, I put you on in my way. When there was, when niggas had to wear the Christie Whitman's, nigga, I was still out there wearing, I was able to get you regular sneakers from the street before they took the street clothes. All that. Anything you needed from the streets, nigga, I was able to do that. And a little nigga named True, True Light, or True, True Lord, or whatever, that caught that body, killed that nigga from Patterson, he ran back to the bar. And shot that nigga in the head. The nigga disrespected him at the bar. That nigga went to his crib, came back, and, and dumped on that nigga and murdered him in front of the bar, in front of everybody. He wound up getting a bunch of time. He's from Asbury. He came to the jail. His mother, I knew his mother. I knew his brother because I put his brother under my wing back in the day. His brother could tell you that. His mother said, yo, make sure my son is all right. Make sure his son was all right. 